What's up, guys? My name's Jonathan. This is my canon, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Cannoneer. Now, today we've got a historical recreation episode that I'm pretty sure you guys might not be familiar with because I definitely wasn't familiar with it until here recently. Chainmail used to armor a ship. Now, it kind of makes sense if you think about it, all the way from wooden ships up to ironclad ships, which we're also going to be testing against the cannon here soon, that somewhere in the middle they would have chain mail that was used to armor parts of the ship. And that's exactly what you'd find about 1840 to about the end of the American Civil War on some ships, where they would use big giant sheets of chain mail to armor important parts like the engine bays and things. So that's what we're going to be testing out today against our cannon here. Now, the specific battle that I'm trying to replicate is going to be the Battle of Cherbourg that happened off the coast of France in the American Civil War, where the USS Kershage, armored up with its chainmail armor, sunk the CSS Alabama. So I'll show you guys what our chainmail looks like in kind of a little bit more detail about how the real stuff was constructed. Ours is going to be a scaled-down model, and then we'll start testing it against our cannon here. But before we head on over to the range, if you guys haven't done so already, go ahead and drop down below and hit that subscribe button. I'm sure you guys are going to want to keep up with all the fun stuff that we're going to be shooting with the cannon here and out of the cannon, including that ironclad ship that's going to be coming out in a future video. And if you guys are maybe interested in sending us a projectile of your own design, all the information for the subscriber shot special will be down in the description below. And last but not least, I'd like to take just a quick second to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. So you guys know by now that PCBWay is a full-time channel sponsor, but now it's your chance to join the PCBWay family and possibly win $500 and a $300 PCBWay gift card for any of their awesome services. PCBWay is currently hosting their 11th annual badge design contest, and if you're feeling creative, you can create your own badge and submit your design to win. All you have to do is create a unique badge that can be made using PCBWay's 3D printing or printed circuit board services, or a combination of both of those, using the number 11 and PCBWay's logo, and then submit your design to the email address listed on screen. And if your design is chosen, you could possibly become PCB Way's official badge for the year. So if you're feeling creative, PCB Way's badge contest is open until April 30th of this year. So go ahead and submit your design and you can win $500 in cash, as well as $300 in gift cards for PCB Way's awesome services. Things like 3D printing, laser engraving, CNC work, sheet metal fabrication, all kinds of awesome services to help bring your design from just a drawing on a piece of paper to a thing that you can actually hold in your hand or maybe sell to clients. So if you've got a project that you'd like to bring to life using PCBWay's awesome services, or if you'd like to join in on their badge contest, use my link in the description in the pinned comment below to check out their awesome website and tell them that the Cannoneer sent you. And now back to today's video. So this is my version of ship's chainmail, and you can see we've got vertical hanging chains, and they're wired together, every other link. Now, we only have one layer of chain. You would have seen multiple layers of chain on the actual ship itself, but since we have a smaller cannon, we're going to scale the chainmail down as well. And this is currently attached to a pine board backing, and we're going to put a one-inch thick piece of oak over the top of it, which is what they did to keep the water out on the actual ship itself. And here's the finished product with the one-inch thick oak board over the top of it. And you can see the chain just laying down there in that cavity in the middle. And we know a lead cannonball has no problem going through that one inch thick oak or the pine board backing. So we'll see if that chain mail makes a difference. Okay, y'all, we haven't had a really good historical reenactment in a little while. So today we're going to be reenacting the Battle of Cherbourg. And that's going to be our USS Kersage down there with its chain mail armoring. So up first, we're going to be using a stone cannonball to see if this will go through. I don't think this is going to go through. We know these will go through the wood paneling at least. So... Let's see if this can go through the chain mail itself. I don't think it's gonna, but let's find out. Okay, y'all, we're up here at our USS Kersage, and that's where we hit it with that stone cannonball. Absolutely no problem going through the front layer of wood. It looks like it exploded on impact with all that chain. There's a bunch of rock pieces down here on the ground as well. It looks like there's a little bit of an impact back there on the back. We will take this thing apart so you guys can see it. 
when we're done here, we'll take this thing apart. But it doesn't look like it went through the chain. As far as I can tell, there's just a little bit. You can see the powdering of the stone coming out of there. There's a little bit of an impact right there. I can feel it with my finger, but don't think it went through. Don't know if it busted the chain, but we'll up the ante to a lead cannonball and see what happens. Well, it looks like that stone was stopped by the chain, so let's up the ante to a 10 ounce lead cannonball and see what we can do against that. I kind of think this might do some good damage to the chain. I don't think it's gonna go through, but let's find out. Okay, here's the corsage. Pretty hole right in the center there. Let's pick all this up and see what we got. Ooh, giant bowing in the back there. It looks like it cracked the back, but it does not look like it went through at all. Dip in our hood, big dip in the front. Let's see if we can get down there. There's all the pieces, there's some lead down there too. So it looks like the chain probably did a pretty good job. I don't know if you guys can see down in there, but it looks like we might have caught some of the lead down in there. We'll take this thing off, like I mentioned, take the covering board off and see what's down in there. But it looks like our chain is severely deformed right there in the middle. So let's put a steel ball through this and see what happens. And for a reference of how much it did bow, you can see the chain starting to hang out the bottom there. Up next, we've got a steel ball. I kind of think this is going to do a pretty good amount of damage on that chain, if not go through completely or just break a bunch of the links inside. But let's touch this off in our cannon and find out. Quick shout out to Uncle Tommy for letting us use his range, and a quick shout out to Varden's Body Shop for helping us out with our backstops. Okay, let's pick up our carousage here and see what damage we did. I know it went through. See back there, and there's a hole in our hood there. Let's see on the front. We missed the chain. So we'll load up another steel ball and see if we can get the chain in the center there, probably about right over there or so, and get a nice spot in the chain and see what we can do with it. Okay, here's our USS Kersage. Looks like we hit up here. Those steel balls are just a little bit undersized for our cannon. They're 35 millimeters, our cannon's 38. But there's no hole in the back, nor is there a hole other than that ginormous dent right there in our hood. So, not sure if this chain stopped it or slowed it down. I can see the steel ball in the wood right there. You guys might be able to see a little bit of the reflection kind of glinting back in there, but I can see it right there. There's a little bit of it right there through the wood. So I don't know if it slowed it down enough just so the wood, wood could catch it or what, but we will take off the front and take a look. But let's see if we can double up our powder uh, grains and see if we can send a lead ball all the way through this. Okay, y'all, here's a new lead ball with 800 grains of powder. 
Don't know what this is going to do. It did a pretty good wallop on it the first time, but it didn't go through. Let's see what happens with double the powder charge. Well, I don't think our USS Kersage's chainmail armor did so good on that shot against double the powder. Because when I look over here in this side, our chain's not even connected up there at the top anymore. It looks like it fractured the back. A little bit of it, the staple we had it in over there is there. Still there, but the rail's gone. There's a big hole from one of those earlier, maybe the steel ball. But that did some damage to that chain and deformed it all. I'll get out. So we will take this thing apart and show you guys what all that looks like on the inside of the wood damage and everything. So there you go. That's what chain mail, <laughs> ship's chain mail does against a couple of shots. And this seems to be sort of similar to what the historical records say. Looks like it got battered really hard on the inside, but none of them really seemed to go through too terribly bad. And if they did, they got slowed down. So there you go. Okay, guys, here's the inside of our ship's chain mail with the Batten board removed and the chain fell off. The steel ball was caught in there. It fell out when I uh, opened this up. And here's all those holes in the batten board. Those look like. And here's our chain mail up close. You can see part of our lead as well as the wire that I had using to keep all of those chains together is embedded inside here. And here's the actual chain itself, all beaten to pieces. You can see the lead ball is embedded right there. It bit the rod that we had holding it up, all the pieces. Let me prop this up there so you guys can get a little better look. Okay, and there it is standing up again. You can see where that lead ball hit it right there in the center. It's still embedded in. Big mess over here on the side. You can see where all that chain fell apart. But overall, it looks like it fared pretty well. I can see a couple of broken wires down in there, but that lead ball embedded in the middle is definitely interesting and that would have probably protected our ship from having to sail all the way through to the engine. So, there you go. Well guys, that was a fun one, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. How did our chain mail fare against our cannon and how do you guys think that would have done in the real battlefield? Now the USS Kersach did not sink, but it took a major wallop to all of that chain. If you guys are interested, I'll link in the description below some more information about that battle so you can read about it if you're curious. And their chain was all destroyed and beat up. And that's what you kind of see in ours as well. It deformed a little bit, but it definitely beat the wood up and embedded the chain into that wood and basically destroyed the bar that we were holding that chain with. So I hope this kind of maybe answers some questions that you might not know you had, or maybe you didn't even know that chainmail existed on a ship. I sure didn't. So that was definitely fun to test out and see how our cannon did against that replica Kersage today. So I enjoyed this video. I enjoyed shooting that chainmail. And if you guys did as well, go ahead and hit that like button. It's really going to help us get this video out into the world of YouTube. If you guys have any more suggestions about things you'd like to see us test with the cannon or out of the cannon here, leave them in a comment as well, or maybe some questions about the cannon, and I'll be happy to answer those as well. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. My name's Jonathan. This is my Canon. Thanks for hanging out until the very end here, guys, and I'll catch y'all on the next episode of The Cannoneer.